to malignancy. And that's why Barrett's esophagus is of concern. I have a separate presentation series on Barrett's esophagus. You can uh, watch my uh, channel on YouTube to learn more about the Barrett syndrome or the Barrett's esophagus. I'll just, as I said, that basically this is about the lining of the lower esophagus that could happen typically due to the chronic reflux. And this could be, or this may turn into a pre malignant condition, and ultimately it may lead to cancer of the esophagus. So, one more slide of normal esophagus and the Barrett's esophagus. This is what you would see uh, through endoscopy and the biopsy results would show that. Let's move on. So another thing that can go wrong from mouth to if we follow the GI tract, another impairment could be or disorder could be the inflammation of esophagus. I guess is inflammation. So this could also happen because of the GERD, Borchestro esophageal reflux disease. So, this is another slide where you can see how the normal esophagus works and what goes wrong with the acid reflux. It may lead to, unfortunately, the inflammation of esophagus. So, I have got so many slides that uh, I had to break down my files into the uh, smaller files. So this file ends here. So let me open the other file and then we'll continue. So let's move on to the uh, other disorders. You could have what is labeled as esophageal varices. What it does basically when you are having some sort of severe liver diseases that may lead to esophageal varices. So the veins are enlarged and as a result what happens the blood doesn't flow the typical route and it is forced to go through the small veins, it may rupture, it may bleed. So by definition, esophageal varices are abnormal enlarged veins in the esophagus and this occurs mainly with the serious liver diseases. You could have a cirrhosis, you could have a liver cancer, and as I was saying that uh, what happens, the blood flow is blocked, maybe because of the scar tissue or maybe because of the blood clot. So to get around, the blood flows through the small vessels that are not designed to carry the large volumes of blood. And that leads to life threatening bleeding. So what are the symptoms? You could have a lightheadedness, black or bloody stools, uh, vomiting, loss of consciousness in severe cases. So, uh, it could happen because of um, various reasons as I was just saying. So, let's take a picture of esophageal varices here. So, this is what it is. So, the veins are enlarged and it creates all sorts of problems. So you may frequently see with the uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Another important disorder that you may encounter is achalasia. Achalasia, in this what happens, this is a disorder that makes it difficult for the food and liquid to pass into the stomach. So food doesn't follow the way it should. And why is that? This happens because the nerves that in, that we have in the esophagus are damaged. So the causes of this achalasia is unknown, but it is 
it could be because of anxiety and tension that can uh, aggravate the condition. And of course, the treatment would include the widening of the sphincter to make it easier to have the normal flow of the fluid. So see, this is the normal where the sphincter is working properly and alastia is one where the sphincter doesn't relax and as a result it creates complications. You might have heard about haranya. What is haranya? So by definition when you have haranya that could happen anywhere. So the organ pushes through the surrounding because of the weak spot. So for example, you can have a hyper hernia and that would mean that, and I'll show you in a picture, it, the upper part of the stomach comes out or pops out beyond the esophageal opening in the diaphragm. Or you can have inguinal hernia where a small loop of bowel protrudes or comes out through a weak place in the lower abdominal muscle wall or simply speaking groin. So this is your normal esophageal stomach duodenum. This is normal, the sphincter is normal here. Here because of the hernia what happens, the, the pop up is out there through the stomach. It goes beyond the diaphragm and right about you have the esophagus. So that is that is called hyper hernia. In the inguinal hernia, it happens in the growing area. But the concept is same. You might have heard about, let's move on to the another impairment. You might have heard about the ulcer. So the peptic ulcer, <coughs> also called gastric or duodenal ulcers. So ulcers can happen anywhere in your GI tract, right? So what ulcer means? By definition, it is an open sore or lesion or a wound of skin or the epithelial tissue. When you have a perforation or a hole in the lining of the small intestine, it could be called uh, ulcer related to small intestine. You could have it in the lower esophagus. You could have it in the stomach. It could be anywhere. And why that happens? It happens because to digest the food and to convert the different organs and the glands are releasing the different chemicals, juices, enzymes, liquids to chemically process the food and ultimately turn into the nutrients. Sometimes this acid or the gastric juice called pepsin that would damage the lining of the stomach or the abdomen or the duodenum and that could lead to the ulcer. So by definition the perforating ulcer would be the one that creates hole through the entire thickness of the organ. Okay. And what are the common causes? As I was just saying that it could happen due to those uh, acid that different organs releases. Besides that, you could have H. pylori infections, long-term use of uh, different drugs that could also trigger ulcers. Um, stress or spicy food per se does not lead to the ulcers, but if you have it, then of course it can make your symptoms worse. Of course, the treatment includes the anti-acids that we all take once in a while when we feel to dilute and weaken the effect of hydrochloric acid. So these are some of the pictures of you could have a duodenal ulcer. Remember the stomach and then it ends and the duodenal starts. So if it happens in the duodenum, it's called a duodenal ulcer. This is your small intestine. It could happen in your um, stomach called gastric ulcer, right? It could even happen in your esophagus. It could happen anywhere. So let's move on to the another impairment frequently encountered that is called gastritis. What is gastritis? Inflammation of 
the inner lining of the stomach. This could happen due to the alcohol. Again, the causes are more or less same due to the um, stress from burns, trauma, sometimes injury could cause all these things. It could be related to or caused by autoimmune disorders, H. pylori. Uh, sometimes the there is a backflow of bile into the stomach that could also lead to the inflammation in the lining of the stomach. And those with the history of malignancy, depending upon their various treatment that they unfortunately go through, um, this could be one of the complication of uh, someone having to go through the uh, radiotherapy. So, these are the seeing is believing different slides. Food that can cause the gastritis. Actually, aggravates, it's not by definition the case, but everything plays a role. So, if you do the endoscopy, you will see this is your normal stomach, this is the inflamed stomach, and endoscopy could give a better view to your doctor to advise you what you should do. Let's move on to the fatty liver. What is fatty liver? As the name suggests, there is too much fat in the liver and that's why it's a disease. Picture of fatty liver, picture of healthy liver. See where the liver is located. We have reviewed multiple times, now you know. And when there is too much fat, it looks like that. Now, this subject is so vast, we can dive deep forever. But just to give an overview, the fatty liver can be classified into different categories depending upon the stage and the grade, uh, the biopsy and the correlation of all those details. Uh, you can have from a mild, simple as fatty liver without any inflammation all the way up to where you have a, a fibrosis and beyond that the cirrhosis of the liver where the liver is completely gone basically. So this could happen for multiple reasons. Uh, one of the leading cause is severe malnutrition. If you drink too much alcohol, needless to say, we all should be aware of that. Obesity is linked to the liver disease of this type high blood sugar, <clears throat> sometimes pregnancy could be a reason that may aid or contribute to this disease. Um, you may have hepatitis uh, that could be causing this. Again, exposure to certain toxins or side effects from some of the medication that we may take. So interestingly, I found this slide uh, that shows your healthy liver all the way up to the cirrhosis where the liver is practically not working and beyond that it could lead to hepatic cancer so from fatty liver to malignancy all sorts of things can happen in our liver unfortunately and we we did review the different functions liver does how critical those are although in the gi tract the food doesn't pass through the liver or for that matter the pancreas or the gallbladder. One more important disorder as it relates to liver is the enlargement of the liver. They call hepatomegaly is the enlarged liver where the liver is larger than the normal size. So take a look at the normal liver and the enlarged liver. Yet another view of healthy liver and the enlarged liver. So we have a laundry list of causes that can contribute or that may lead to the enlarged liver. That could be um, chronic hepatitis to unknown autoimmune disorders to uh, metabolic or storage disorders. 
it could be because of some infections due to some malignancy or there are some congenital abnormalities you name it or maybe you have a congestive heart failure that could also be contributing to the enlarged liver so or the inflammation in the lining of the heart or the pericarditis medically speaking so they all contribute to the enlarged liver let's move on to the next one in the liver category so you could have inflammation of the liver as simple as that hepatitis inflammation of liver or the liver tissue so <clears throat> you may have a jaundice poor appetite vomiting abdominal pain diarrhea you name it this could be acute if it results within 6 months this could be chronic if it continues and goes beyond 6 months okay it may lead to acute liver failure chronic hepatitis cirrhosis is unfortunate outcome when we are dealing with chronic hepatitis and your body is not 